Hi again, we're here at Fest Casual 2018. I'm Jeff Bradbury with Hughes, and I'm here with Frank Pacey, Chief Executive Officer at Corner Bakery. Frank, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Uh, we're gonna dive right in. I mean, Corner Bakery's been, uh, you know, an institution for quite some time. We just heard you speak about it uh, in your session. What is it you think that sets Corner Bakery apart, and what is it you want customers to take away in terms of thinking about the Corner Bakery as a restaurant and as part of their life? Well, I think first and foremost, it's been the quality of our food. I mean, that's always been the foundation of the brand since it was really started more than 25 years ago. Uh, you know, we pride ourselves in having kitchen crafted quality food. Um, and in addition to that, I mean, we've got a great catering business. So uh, we've always brought the food to businesses. And so it's always been a core part of our business. We like to consider ourselves the last minute catering experts. So if you've got a problem, uh, we try to solve it for you uh, on the catering business. So we think those things kind of make us unique in the in the category. So Excellent. And um, as we've heard it here at the conference, I mean, restaurant technology has really taken off. Uh, we're seeing it back of house, front of house. It's how we reach out to customers. What would you say is sort of the the aspect of technology that you think has most impacted Corner Bakery over the last you know three years or so? Well, I think it's... Um, there's a couple things that are going on in the industry. Uh, the industry always has been about convenience. And so I think the rise of uh, third party delivery services uh, has really impacted the business. Um, it just, it creates an opportunity to bring food to people. Like I say, we've always done the catering business and brought food to people. And now you can do small orders to that. Um, so we're actually considering our own uh, self-delivery program, testing our own self-delivery program in places like um, Chicago where we have a penetration of stores to do that um, because I think it's just um, the whole cocooning of the population whether you want to blame it on Netflix or streaming or those kinds of things there's just a there's an opportunity and, and you see this with things whether it's Blue Apron or Home Chef where people don't necessarily want to go out as much they want to have the, the products brought to them so I think I mean I certainly think that's one of the big changes that's happened in the food industry recently. I, I, well, let's digging that a little bit deeper we talked about this third party delivery piece but you know i mean delivery in general has been around for a while and certainly we think about delivery related to pizzas and right so, so how is the the this new generation of the, this delivery model impacting corner bakery and, and impacting how restaurants are delivering to their customers well i think you know it, it's interesting if you follow the history of the restaurant industry right you had the sit down restaurant then you had the drive through became more convenient and now it's it's bringing food to you, right? And so, yeah, historically, um, Asian cuisine and pizza has been delivered product, but now you have delivery from all these new places uh, that just creates a whole different um, amount of choices for the guests. And, you know, ultimately, uh, the I think the business has always been about choice. Uh, some of the trends you see is more and more customization, um, you look at specialty diets, there's a lot of, in the past it was kind of more mass market as opposed to much more personalized uh, food experience and, and customization of products. So uh, I, I think those are all trends that will continue over time in the industry. So, so staying on this idea of how customer expectations are changing, what is what, what do you think is sort of the most unique way that the customer expectation has changed over the last three years? What do they, what do they want now that maybe it wasn't, you weren't even thinking about as a business three years ago? I do think there's a lot more focus on what I'll call the specialized diets. Um, you know, whether it's vegan, uh, vegetarian. Um, and so as a result, there's, and the ability, and the ability to customize, right? So a lot of I mean, if you look at a lot of fast casual, I mean, fast casual was really kind of at the forefront of that in terms of, you know, concepts like Chipotle, where you walk along, along the line and, and pick your ingredients. And so I think, um, you know, that trend will continue um, and you'll have more, uh, you'll just have, have more choices. And then how, how does that work in terms of the complexity of your operating platform? to be able to serve those choices to guests, right? So those are, I think those are things that will continue to, to develop in the business. Okay, and turn this around a little bit. Um, how have employee expectations changed and how do you keep your employees trained and engaged so they're presenting the right face uh, that Corner Bakery wants to present to customers when they come in? 
Well, I mean, we're fortunate that we have a lot of really long-term loyal employees in a lot of our restaurants. Uh, the challenge that's happening right now in the environment is uh, minimum wage increases that are happening. And so um, now as you're hiring less, you know, hiring uh, employees that aren't necessarily skilled, they're making a high wage and you're starting to get some salary compression between the longer term uh, trained employees and the new employees that are coming in. And so trying to manage that expectation uh, with those employees and, and having, you know, historically food service might have been a little bit better paid. Uh, you're still, you're now even uh, have more competition for uh, employees from other environments because the minimum wage has gone up. So, And, and because of that, do you, do you put a greater emphasis on retention and training? I think, uh, you know, one of the things that we're just getting ready to roll out is more of a uh, 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 electronic training because I think a lot of people now you know they they want to have uh, the training in whether it's uh, even YouTube or controlled things right where you can train and so uh, there are a lot of uh, alternative avenues that the technology has enabled that makes it easier to to train people as long as you've got those kind of tools uh, available to you so and, 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 and it's not quite training specifically, but it is about employee engagement. How do you keep your employees tuned into the culture of Corner Bakery? How do you keep them connected and feeling like they're part of this bigger organization? Yeah, well, obviously the big challenge, uh, the big opportunity there is to make sure that the, the managers are, are doing those kind of things. And, uh, you know, we have uh, webinars for marketing programs that are coming out so we can uh, explain that to people and, and get that to trickle down. But really it's the... It's the operating infrastructure that really has to be able to to translate that down and, and to make sure that you know what we're coming up with in the test kitchen can be executed at the restaurant level, right? Because there's you know it's if it's great in the test kitchen but not great in the restaurant because it's too difficult to do, it's it's not going to be successful. So excellent. Um, going back to this idea of sort of how the restaurant is changing, we've heard some people talk about AI being used in different ways uh, around the uh, around the restaurant, uh, robotics, especially in some of the some of the restaurant applications where robotics are appropriate, other technologies, big data analytics, those sorts of things. How do you make sure that as a as a restaurant, as a business, you've got sort of the fundamentals in place, the digital infrastructure in place, so that when you want to take on that next piece of technology, or you're looking for that next change, or you need to transition from maybe an existing practice to a future practice, that you've got sort of that right fundamental IT core that's able and prepared to take on that next bit of, uh, of technology or that next change. I, you know, I think it's an interesting challenge because um, sometimes I think there's a tendency to get ahead of the guests, right? And so, you know, how do you make sure that the guests are tracking along with you, right? So, um, you know, we have online ordering, but it's still a very small percentage of the mix of our business. And and a lot of people will talk about apps, and and but but if you look at many restaurant companies, the amount of guests who actually download the apps are a relatively small number. But but people will use the mobile optimized website, right? So. Uh, it's it, it's tough to continue to to stay there, and I think you know that's part of the job of the CEO and the head of the technology to say, hey, where do we need to invest? Which ones are which investments are going to make a difference for our brand, which may be different than other brands based on your consumer profile. So if you know. When I got here, I was shocked that we still had newspapers in the restaurants, okay, but based on some of our clientele, uh, you know, they still want to come in and have their coffee and read the newspaper. And so uh, it's, it's just one of those things is that, and, and, and it, it, it may be even different from restaurant to restaurant. So if I look at restaurants in downtown Chicago, they're going to have a much higher millennial population than maybe one of my suburban restaurants might have. So it's just kind of... Yeah, so I, I don't know. If there's a good answer to that question. Uh, it's I think you have to kind of look at it in bite-sized elements because the cost of changing, uh, you you have to have the right partners who are evolving the technology with you, 
and staying current with it as opposed to jumping from one technology to another because the investment would be so high in trying to do those kind of things. So. Yeah, well, I, th I think that's interesting. We've seen that, um, you know, for a while it was, what's the next technology, what's the next shiny thing, right. people moving from, from, you know, thing to thing. Right. And I think maybe at this conference in particular, we've started to hear people, just as you said, think more about what are the fundamental pieces and how do I, how do I build them in a way where I'm not making a big bet on whatever is new, but I'm making smart adjustments, uh, you know, incremental steps as I move forward. So how do you think about those sorts of incremental pieces and how they fit together? With well, well, I think ultimately the, the true test is um, what does the guest like? What does the guest want to do, right? I mean, it's interesting. I've looked at a couple of different ordering systems and, and you know, some of them are much more intuitive than others are, right? And so uh, it's, you know, it's incumbent on us to kind of say, okay, great, what, what fits our platform? What is going to be easier for the guests? And should we continue to invest in, you know, this when it, maybe it's going to voice ordering as opposed to, uh, you know, typing in and checking a box and doing these kind of things or doing it by picture, uh, for example, right? And so, uh, you know, one of the opportunities of coming to a conference like this is to see the different things that are out there because uh, sometimes you don't know what it is until you see it, right? So uh, it's, it is fascinating to see the pace of the technological change and, um, you know, how it may be affect, infecting the business. So. so keeping on our you know, future looking hat, um, what do you think is out there that's maybe just on the edge of your vision two years out, maybe three years out that you think is the next thing that's going to kind of your, you expect to kind of change your approach or change something about your business? Well, I think the, the biggest challenge is the minimum wage that I've talked about. Um, you know, I think there are going to be certain concepts that are uh, potential winners and losers in that. You know, if you're a, uh, a high labor, can you pass the the prices on? Uh, is there a different economic model? You've talked about robots, and you know, if you'd asked me about this, you know, two years ago, could I ever see a, a robot making a salad in the restaurant? I'd have probably said no. But you know, as you start looking at you know, fifteen dollars an hour or whatever, does it does it make sense to look at some of those things? Does it make sense to alter your service models on what you're doing and and how you price the products and so I think um, you know the ongoing cost I mean you you look at a concept like ours where there's a lot of crafting of the the food in the kitchen compared to a self-serve yogurt shop they have very different challenges in a rising minimum wage environment so I think you know concepts like corner baker are gonna have to see you know what's the right way for us to make the challenge we don't want to price ourselves to um, where you, you can't afford to, to eat there because that's not a that's not a winning solution either, right? So we've got to got to make sure the model works as we go forward. So, got it. Well, thank you for your time today, Frank. This has been fantastic. Again, we're here at Fast Casual 2018. I'm with Frank Pacey from uh, Corner Bakery. I'm Jeff Bradley from Hughes. Thank you for joining us today. All right, great. Thanks. Uh,